Hey everyone, it's Mike Taylor, your friendly SAP Business One consultant. Today I'm going to be covering the DTW and how to update master data from Excel. This is a topic I'm asked about a lot and primarily this is to support customers and get them into doing basic updates so that they can do it themselves and save a little bit of money. I am going to cover updating business partners, how to find the information, how to use the DTW, how to update items, and how to translate uh, table links. And I'll show you a little bit more about that now. Let's go. So the DTW is great because you can load information basically simulating you doing it manually. It's going to run through the validations of the DI API, so you are not likely to cause any corruption um, because, again, it's similar to you doing it all manually, but you don't have to do it manually. So you run it here. Here's the data transfer workbench. I'm not going to show you how to install the whole thing. You install it from the patch package here. So this is the SAP 9.2 PL03. This is the newest one you can get as of today. You go to packages and you can install the data transfer workbench aka the DTW or you can do the 64-bit DTW installed on your machine. Any machine that can access the server could install it. So you run it and you're going to get something like this. You have to log on. In my case I actually am at uh, SQL 2014 now. Change server you put your server name in there, you put your SA login, that system administrator, and you put your password in and you click OK. And then you get your list of companies and you log in generally with the manager. You can change it to your specific user as long as you have access to the uh, item. You can do that. So I'm going to put my high security password in there. Bet you can't guess it. Then you would log in. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm logged in. So the first thing you want to do is find the information that you want to load. So view and system information. So today we are going to do a BP, let's just do a name update here. So I'm going to update just a regular field. So you can see in the very bottom left it says OCRD and card name, OCRD is the table, card name is the name of the field. <clears throat> so what we want to do is go and we can start with a template. So I'm going to go here to all apps. I'm on Windows 10, so this is just a regular start menu. Go down to SAP Business One. You have the DTW installed. You'll have this thing called templates. Templates, business partners, business partner master data. And then you can just look for OCRD, OCRD to business partner. Launch this. This is a template style Excel sheet. So this comes in here and you're like, why do I have all these fields? Why, Mike, I don't get it. Um, basically, it's very simple. You just remove what you don't need. So you see on the top, you have this link here. The top sometimes will match the second row, but sometimes not. So you see here, there's some that are different. Pay terms, group code, group num. I do not know why they changed it, but the bottom one is the database field name or column name. And the top one is the DTW link. So we see here, it's very easy on this one. OCRD.card name, card name. Card name, card name. You can search for it. So if I knew card name, if it's something different, search for it. The bottom is going to match what you do with the view system information. The top is required for the DTW. You cannot change this. You have to have two rows and you always have to have them pretty much in the same format. You can technically delete the second row if you want, but that's just a waste of time. So I am now going to make my life easier and I'm going to go deleted and I'm going to just delete all the ones I don't want to make things easier. So just for the sake of ease, I'm going to leave the card code here because I know this one is the primary key because you're going to need something to tell the system what you're updating and then you're going to need something to tell the system what is being updated. So in this case, I'm just going to update the name. I know it's fairly useless, but in this case, it's exactly the same for every other field except for a certain linked field, which I'll also cover. 
So card name, let's go here, Mike Taylor, there's one for me. So I am going to take the BP code and you can just export this. If this was from, say you did a query, uh, you did a simple query here, or you had a query already written. I mean, you can already output these, execute it, very simple, copy data down at the bottom here, just paste the information in here. Uh, there's all this extra junk that comes with it shift this delete this and then you can basically just modify these and do do what you want but okay so in this case I'm just gonna whittle it down just because I just want a couple so basically however you get the things here you have the things here so what I'm gonna do is just make a couple modifications here so I'm gonna say testing DTW update super original DW update. Okay, so uh, that's basically all you need to do. Save it. I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to save it. I always just save it as the primary table. So I'm going to say OCRD and I'm going to do it as a tab delimited. Save it to the desktop. Um, best practices here, you want to close this because now any saves you make are going to be saved as a tab. So if you want to keep modifying this, you will also want to save this as an Excel spreadsheet. So you see it's a tab. Tab delimited will not save any of the formatting. It will not save any of your formulas and et cetera, et cetera. So you need to save it as an Excel workbook too. And then what I will do is I will just close this down. Okay. One last note here is putting your mouse over this note. The notes have nice little uh, links there with the field length. So the field length is 100. If you go over 100 in here, uh, you're going to be in trouble and it's not going to let you load it. So just be aware of that if you're importing something or especially like an address, it's going to be an issue. Okay, so I'm going to save that. I already saved it, so I'm going to say no. So <clears throat> let's jump over to our DTW. We're going to click import here. We're going to click master data because we're updating master data, that's your hint. We're gonna click next. We're going to click update. Uh, this video will not cover the adding of new business partners. So if you want me to do a video for that, uh, subscribe, like, comment below, and I may do it. So click next, business partner, business partner master data, next, okay. If you have this on comma delimited, and then you tried to click this to find there, you're not gonna find it. So set it to tab delimited. Click the ellipses button on the desktop. You're gonna click OCRD, which we just made. We're gonna click next. These are the uh, mappings that are automatic because we have the correct uh, fields mapped in there. So again, if you don't have both of those rows, you have to have those first two rows and you have to use the systems uh, target fields, it's not going to recognize all of the database columns. It will recognize some, but some have translated names. Why they did this, I have no clue. Why don't they just use the columns from the database? I don't know. Um, push next. You're going to go here. I'm going to run simulation just for the heck of it. Um, it's a good practice, especially with a um, you know medium to large amount of information because it'll give you any errors and then you can fix them before running it. Um, it's just a good best practice. So of course it is extremely simple. Number of errors detected, zero number of process two of two. If there were errors, um, we would be able to see them. So what I will do maybe on another one is I will show you what an error looks like, but basically it gives you kind of like, uh, you know, field is too long and it gives you the code and then you can just search through it. So what you can do now is uh, go here and push next and push import. So you see we have two. It's going to show you two were successful, and then we're going to go and check here. Oh, wow, changed it. That's amazing. Okay, so that's one one way to do it. That's extremely straightforward, and you can update those things. Okay, the second type of update is slightly more complicated. You are going to have to find a sub table, and what happens is. The OCRD table does not contain the words Brad Thompson, for example, in this case. We're going to have to use a translated table. So first, let's jump back into our template. 
Okay, so we're going to come here, and we know this is, look in the bottom left. I can't have my mouse over there, so you're going to look down there bottom left. OCRD and SLP code. So let's go to our template. Let's go find SLP code. Okay, there it is. So in this case, I'm literally just going to remove everything in here. And I'm going to remove all the rest of these. I mean, you can leave these blank. Some might give you an error. I just make my life easier and just remove them. So you see SLP codes, the database table, and then it's salesperson code. Again, this is baffles me. So why it's different, I don't know. So I'm going to click here, copy. I'm just going to do this really straightforward. And actually, I'll show you a query. So query, query generator. So we're going to use an OCRD. And we want the BP code, BP name. And we want to scroll down here, SLP code. So SLP code. OK, here's a trick. See that the SLP code is, where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, there it is. See how it's bold? Click and hold. Click and hold. Oh, by the way, how I got to Query Generator. Hopefully you saw that. Tools, Queries, Query Generator. Hopefully you're somewhat familiar with this. This will just make your life easier. So there's the SLP code. This is what's in uh, OCRD. And then we'll just put the name from OSLP there. OK, so we can see Mike Taylor is 4. 4 is Brad Thompson. Negative 1 is no. 2 is Bill Levin. And then, and then, and then, and then, and so on and so forth. So we want to change from Brad Thompson. Let's say we're going to switch to sales manager. So we can't just type sales manager in here. That'd be too easy. So what we're going to do is we need to map it over to these here. So how do we just get this list so we can do some sort of fancy schmancy VLOOKUP or whatever? So like I showed you, the trick is with the bold letters here. So with the bold thing, we have the bold. And then we just drag that into here so we find it's OSLP. So what you can do is click OCRD and remove the table. So now we just have uh, OSLP, code, name. And we have a nice little table. So we can just copy this with click this, add it to another table, do a VLOOKUP. We can sort it here and do, do what we need to do. In our case, let's just keep it super simple. We're just going to put a 1. All right. So we're going to put it as a 1. So we've translated that. That's very straightforward. Uh, let's take a second one. Let's just take, OK, we're taking parameter technology. And since it's on no, we want to assign it to 1. So we're going to go here. That's the code. And what are we going to do? Two. Let's just change it to sales manager too. One. Um, OK, so that's very straightforward. So you've loaded as OSLP. You've looked through the query generator and you have seen you have seen this table, you've mapped it there, dragged it over, and you've, you've done all your stuff. So exactly the same process now. What we're going to do is we can save it as on our computer as tab. I always use tab. So we're going to say OCRD2 and tab delimited. And I'm going to save this to here. And I'm going to go desktop. So it's going to tell you that's going to lose some of the formatting. Fine by me. Save. And then we're going to go Excel workbook OCRD2. And then we're going to save that. So again, uh, close this. So now what we're going to do is go back to the DTW, click import again, master data, update. We're going to go to business partner, business partner, master data. We're going to select the ellipses, make sure that we're on tabs limited, select OCR2, which we just made, salesperson code. We're going to go here. We're going to run the simulation. We have 100%. Click close. It's nothing. We're going to click next. We're going to click import here. Okay, let's go back. All right, no sales employee. Push refresh. Oh, what a miracle it is okay so now we have our sales manager there so okay so that's we've done a basic uh basic thing a basic field we've done a mapped kind of table field and uh, what we'll do for the last examples we'll do let's do an item and we'll do like this item and let's do something here so let's just do like a default bin location 
So look in the bottom left hand corner, you're going to see OITM U underscore default bin. So you're going to say, well, this is a UDF. How am I going to get this into that sheet? Because there are no uh, templates for that. So I'm going to jump back to the templates, inventory, item master data, OITM for items, open that up. That's fine. Okay, so what we need is we only need the item code and a primary key. You can see it's blue. This field is mandatory. So I'm just going to go and delete all the, all this stuff. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave one just for now, and I'll show you why, because I'm crazy. Okay. Hey, I can zoom in. What happened here? Move this over here. Okay, so item code, item name. So we're just going to do one. Let's just take this manually. Obviously, you can figure out how to do this. Um, what we'll do is we can look under the tools, queries, query generator. Uh, we know it's OITM. And I mashed the keyboard there. So I'm going to click item code. And then I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to say default bin location. So this is easy to copy here. All you need to do is just copy the name of the field with the U in front of it. Click here. I'm just going to change that to that and change that to that. So in this case, I know I've said that certain things are going to be uh, different. But in the case of UDFs, you just literally make the field exactly like this. And that's it. So we're going to say. Uh, DTW update test and then what we'll do is maybe we'll do a second one just for the heck of it so we're going to take this and um, you know don't don't let my example fool you you can update a whole bunch of factors all at once by no means do you have to do one at a time I'm just doing that to keep it very simple you could do multiple columns um, nothing has to be in any particular order for an update as long as the item code is there I usually put the item code first it's just best practices but you don't need to so we'll say uh, doing some stuff make sure you are not over the hundred well in this case it's not a hundred hold your mouse over this over here and you can see 29 characters are we over 29 either of these I don't think so so I'm just gonna check these very straightforward uh, so 1516, no big deal. Delete these columns. So we're all good to go. Save. So first we're going to save it as tab delimited. I'm just going to leave it as OITM on the desktop. Second, I'm going to save it as my formatted Excel workbook. So if I ever want to come back, especially if I have multiple sheets, if you save it only as tab, it's going to remove all your sheets, it's going to remove all your formatting, it's going to remove all your formulas, etc. So you want to save one time as the Excel spreadsheet, one time as the tab delimited. Close this because it needs to be closed. Go back to your DTW, click import. We're going to do master data because this is now item master data. We're going to go click. We're going to go updating because we're not covering adding. We're going to go inventory, item master data. We're going to make sure this is set to tab delimited. We're going to click here. We're going to go ITM. We're going to go here. It's going to match it up nicely because we did our homework. We're going to run the simulation. We don't really need to, but we're going to. Zero is an error. Two out of two, everything's going to be good. If you had errors, it would show you exactly what you're doing. You can switch this down to just what's failed, and then you can uh, see that. It also has an error file left over, which will give you just the errors, and then you can isolate those. Or you can just go back, look at the ones that are erroneous, figure out what's wrong. Maybe the length of the field is wrong. Maybe the coding is wrong. Maybe something doesn't exist, but it'll tell you pretty clearly. Uh, especially with updates, it's quite simple. With imports, there's a lot more to it. Um, now you're going to click next. You're going to click import. Two out of two are done. So let's go back to SAP Business One and check it. We're going to right click here, doing some stuff, and DTW update test. So um, we're four for four. That's pretty much it. Last but not least, Please back up your database. You don't want to be the one that corrupts the database for everybody and brings it to a crashing halt. Don't be that guy. Get somebody to do it if you can't do it. It might be a topic of a future video. Obviously, it won't be included in this video. Uh, chances of corruption are relatively low, but you, know, you don't want to roll the dice on something as important as your company database. Uh, if you have other topics for videos, leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'll read every single comment. Please like and most importantly subscribe and have a great day. Use Business One to full advantage and enjoy your evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Bye for now from Mike. Bowser's over. Peace out.